everybody. Welcome again. This is lesson four in our series, Living the Jesus Creed in our small groups. I just want to say how grateful I am for all of you that are meeting in small groups, whether it's in your homes or in Starbucks or in a classroom or wherever you gather, two or three or more together. And uh, I'm just so grateful for you and remind you that it's all about the one another's, loving one another, encouraging one another, putting up with one another. That's part of it, too. But welcome to uh, this week four, and we're going to talk about in pursuit of peace, in pursuit of peace. It says in 1 Peter 3, 10 and 11, whoever desires to love life and see good days, they must seek peace and pursue it. Now, there's three basic areas in our life that we have great distress, where we lack peace. There's a lot of things that cause us to be stressed and to be uh, distressed, but these are the three biggies, I think. The first one is circumstances that are out of my control. When I'm faced with circumstances that are out of my control, which is most of them, then I begin to get distressed. They cause problems I can't control. I wish I could, but they're just circumstances beyond my control. The second major area is of distress is people that I cannot change. Do you have any of those in your life? You wish you could change them, but you can't, and you keep trying and trying, but it just gets you more and more worked up. People, by the way, you cannot change them. We have a hard enough time changing ourselves but uh, it causes great distress when I have somebody in my life that I really would like to see them change, but I can't make them change. The third area of distress in our lives is problems, problems that I can't explain. And that causes great distress in our life, and we run into those all the time. Why is this happening, and why is this happening to me? As we've said, we're studying through Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, and the fruit of the Spirit. And it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace. And those first three are very significant because they are integrated. They're interwoven with each other. And we spoke about love and we spoke about joy. And today we're going to speak about peace and how do we pursue peace It is such an amazing, much-needed commodity in our lives, a grace that we need in our lives, peace. Jesus said at the Last Supper, the night before he was killed, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. I'm giving you my peace. Well, what is peace? Well, it's the absence of striving. It's when we are at rest and we don't have to force anything. It means that I have this sense of well-being and I'm not flustered or bothered or troubled. It's a, it's a sense of security that everything is going to turn out okay. Some people say, I'm at peace about it. What do they mean? They mean they're not striving to make something happen. They're not striving to cause an outcome, and they're not striving to overcome something that's going to happen unless they change it or fix it. They're at peace. So peace is from God. Peace is something we all need in our lives. So how can I have this kind of peace? Well, the first week we started about starting with what matters most and how to start with relationships, S-T-A-R-T. And then the next week was all about love, L-O-V-E, And last week was joyful, J-O-Y-F-U-L. So this will probably be my last week to do this, but I did come up with P-E-A-C-E. How can we have peace in our lives? So that's where we're going to begin. The first letter is pursue my peace in God. In Philippians 4.9, Paul said, keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, and then the God of peace will be with you. Now, let me just quickly say, we must have great grace from God. We have to have his power working in us to have peace. 
but we have to have effort. We have to put in our part. We have to put in our practice of seeking God so that he will be with us and so that he will give us his peace. We error when we either say it's all up to me or we say if God wants me to have peace, he'll give it to me. He wants us to live with him closely as the God of peace and he wants to give us peace and we have to do our part in seeking him and exercising our faith that he would give us the grace we need to have peace in our lives. Few of us have really true settled peace. Most of us carry heavy burdens of care and usually because we're worried about something that's uh, very important in our lives, whether it's a loved one that's sick and been diagnosed with cancer, it could be someone that's left the family and has a broken relationship, it, it could be that uh, you desire to have a friend and you don't have one or to get married. But they're very important issues, but we get stressed out, we get distressed. And Jesus said this, are you tired? Are you stressed out? Do you carry a heavy load of fear and worry? Jesus said, come to me and I will give you rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. And I love this in the message paraphrase. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. But when we pursue our peace in God, the starting point is we must look to Jesus who became our peace and sacrificed his life. We start and we begin and we enter into peace with God by accepting what Jesus did for us when he died on a cross and he was raised from the dead and then he went to the Father and sent his Holy Spirit. And so we start pursuing the peace of God by accepting the grace of God through Jesus Christ. Just, just as Jesus was handed over to die because of our sins, and he was raised to life to make us right with God. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, since we've been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. My friend Mike Hoy, I think he still has a bumper sticker on the back of his car, and it says, no Jesus, K-N-O-W, equals no peace, K-N-O-W. And then the next line says, no Jesus, N-O, no peace. And that's pretty accurate. That's pretty spot on, good bumper stick sticker theology. I have peace with God only by acceptance of his gift of life through his son. And when I accept Jesus into my life, the outcome of my life is set. I don't need to strive to justify myself before God or people. Boy, we have to get that soaked into our very soul. I don't need to worry about what people think and I don't have to strive to justify myself before God. I can accept that I'm not all right and I'm not okay. And uh, I cannot be okay on my own, but I can lay down that burden because I have been justified before God through Jesus. I have peace with God through Jesus. Wow, what peace this is. And we experience that peace when we first come to Christ. And then Jesus wants us to continue to grow in the peace of God. What's the key to God's peace? The key to God's peace is surrender, surrender. The secret to the peace of God is being abandoned to the God of peace. And when I abandon my life to him, when I surrender my life to him, then he comes into my life with grace and power. And with that, he begins to work in me and work out in me the things that I need. And I need his peace. When I have his peace, I have this sense all is going to be well because God is in charge. So the first thing I have to do is pursue my peace in God. E stands for evaluate the peace in my relationships. Now this will be a little sticky for us, but... We need to evaluate the peace 
in my relationships. If it is possible, Paul wrote, as far as it depends on you, that's a key phrase, live at peace with everyone. That's Romans 12, 18. Let me read it again. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, be, live at peace with everyone. When I'm at peace, as I said earlier, I'm not striving to make things happen. I'm not striving to get things right or to straighten people up or to get it fixed. In Romans 14, 19, and it says this in a few places throughout the New Testament, let us make every effort to do what leads to peace and building each other up. So I have been evaluating my peace in my relationships, the peace I have with other people. And as I've thought about it, and as I've realized there are some relationships that I need to have a greater peace in, then I've made it a point during this season of living the Jesus Creed to seek them out so that as far as it depends on me, I could be at peace with everyone. Now my list got kind of long, so I'll probably not make it to everybody before we get to Thanksgiving, but I want to encourage you to evaluate the relationships in your life and what you can do to bring peace in those relationships. You can't make everybody accept what you're doing, but you can be at peace with them. Do I have peace? This is a little, little quiz for us. Do I have peace with, and then you name the person or your relationship, do I have peace with my wife? Do I have peace with my kids? Do I have peace with those I work with or work for? Do I have peace with my friends? And then yes or no, do I have peace? Am I at peace with Deanna? Am I at peace with my kids? And you, you check that, yes or no, you figure out. Evaluate the peace you have in relationships. Then say, whose problem is it? it? Is it a problem that I've created that has caused this brokenness or this lack of peace in the relationship? Is it something that they've done or is it something that both of us did? And then what can I do? What should I do about it? You see, there may be a struggle between me and other people, but there does not have to be a struggle within me. I can be at peace even as I realize that there are some things I'm just not ever going to work out, but I can be at peace in my relationship with them inside me, within me. I don't, have, I don't have to make things come out right, but I do want to be at peace as far as it depends on me. I can let it go and let God work and let him do what he can do, and he's in charge of the outcomes, but I can be at peace inside me no matter what. I'm not the one in charge. So that's a big one, a big point in having peace and pursuing peace, and that is evaluate my peace in my relationships and then consider what part am I in that and what can I do and how should I go about pursuing peace with the people around me. Sometimes for me, it's just taking somebody to lunch and uh, listening to them, caring about them, asking them questions, being considerate of them, is doing my part to seek peace. It doesn't have to be a big deal. Maybe it's just a, a letter you'd sit down and write an encouragement to somebody. But evaluate the peace in your relationships, and then what should you do? How could you invest in that relationship? The letter A stands for accept what cannot be changed. If I'm to pursue peace in my life, this one's huge. Accept what cannot be changed. You see, I can have peace with God, and I can be at peace with others as much as it depends on me, but then I can struggle deeply because I'm not at peace in me. I don't have peace. Now, first step, as I mentioned, is a relationship with God, but I can still have great distress and not be at peace within me because of my past. I struggle because of what I've done in the past, things that I've done, my sins, my mess-ups, my mistakes. And then there are those people that have done things to me, their wrongs, their hurts, and not let bitterness, the poison of bitterness, seep into my life and take away my peace. So I must accept the things I cannot change. Everything behind me is behind me. 
and I cannot do anything about it. But God wants to give me help that I could accept what cannot be changed and have peace today to go forward. Paul was writing from the prison in, in uh, Rome, and he wrote to the church in Philippi, and he said this, I have learned that no matter the situation, I can be content. I have learned the secret of living in any situation, no matter what happens to me. I can do this because of Christ who gives me strength. There's a famous prayer that we've all said probably at one time or another, but we usually just say the first few lines. It's called the serenity prayer. And I want to say this prayer right now, and then I'll probably pray it again at the end of this lesson. But it goes like this. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Give me the peace, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Now, the power of the prayer is in the next several lines, which we rarely hear. And this is what it says. May I live one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace. And that's the way this life is. Taking, as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, and not as I would have it. Trusting that you, God, will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you in the next. Amen. You see, uh, we can give everything to God and pray that prayer of serenity because nothing can happen to me that will not turn out for good. Well, Dennis, how can you say that? because of who God is. God is not only good, he's great. In God's care, I really live beyond any harm that could happen to me. You see, my future is secure and my present is uh, solid and I don't have to fear anything that might come my way because no matter what happens, God is great enough that he can take care of it, he can work through it, he can put it all together and make it work out. For we know, it says, Romans 8, 28, one of the most famous verses in the Bible, for we know that all that happens to us is working together for our good if we love God and are fitting into his plans. I like that in the Living Bible. For we know that all that happens to us is working together for our good. As I've said many times, not everything is good, and God didn't do bad things to us. I didn't need help with that. I, I did a pretty good job of messing up things and making bad decisions and hurting people, and, and uh, I don't need any help there. But God is the God of greatness, and because of who he is, he can take all of the stuff in my past and work it together for my good and his glory. And so I can accept the things I cannot change. I can't go back, but I can thank God that he can take it and work it all together and give me peace in the midst of it. C stands for concentrate on knowing the king of peace. I hesitated a little bit to make this a point like I did, but I want to suggest to you that for all of us, we need to concentrate more on knowing the King of Peace, on talking to him and listening to him. I mentioned that this past Sunday. Concentrate on knowing the King of Peace. A famous, famous verse from the Bible, Isaiah 26.3. It says, You will keep, O God, you will keep in perfect peace all those whose mind is stayed on thee, whose mind is stayed on you, because they trust in you you will keep in perfect peace all those whose mind is stayed on you because they trust in you. What or who do you think about more than anything else? Now, one of our goals for this season of living the Jesus Creed is that we would together with 
accountability and encouragement with one another and using the devotional book and outlines and memory verses and tools, we're encouraging each other to concentrate more and more, give more attention to the God who made us, the God who is the God of peace, that we would make him first in our lives and that we would love God with all of our mind and we'd place our mind there. I have a question for you that's a question everybody should be asked and everybody would probably have pretty much the same answer. Do you worry? And uh, do you worry a lot? What or whoever has your attention has you. So if I focus on worrying, then that's what's got my attention and that's what causes me to lose my peace. But if I put my attention on God and the more I concentrate on him and think about him and, and I quote back the Jesus Creed and I quote the Lord's Prayer and go through Psalm 23 and I think of him as I go through the day, the more settled will be his peace in my life. The greatest expression of love is focused attention to look to God, to listen for God, to let him know how I feel and to talk with him. And, and throughout the day and when I go to sleep at night and when I get up in the morning, do I turn my attention to him, concentrate on knowing the God of peace so that I will be living in his peace. I suggest that all of us need to focus more, think more about who God is and how much he loves us and uh, how much he means in our lives. And the more we do that, the greater we will experience the peace of God that passes all understanding. It says Jesus' words, more than anything else, put God first and do what he wants. Then all your other needs will be met as well. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. Now that's a good word to me. I bet it's good for many of you too. Concentrate on knowing the King of Peace. Finally, in your pursuit of peace, I just want to end with this. If you're going to have peace in this life and you're going to have the peace of God, then we must be aware, as Jesus said, expect trouble, you will have trouble, trials and tribulations in your life. I will have trials and troubles and tribulations in my life. In the past, I had trials and troubles and today, I had a few, and tomorrow I'll have some more. Jesus said, I have said these things to you so that you may have peace in me. In this world, you will have trouble. You will have trials and sorrow. You will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Those are the words of Jesus. Good to just remind each other and focus on them and realize the promise of God, we're going to have trouble in this life. We're going to have trials and tribulations and things aren't going to go well. And we're going to have some very, very, very tough times, sad times. Do you know that you will never live a troubled free life? It's always something, isn't it? Cheer up. You're going to have one problem after another. And sometimes they come in multiples too for the rest of your life. There is one word for all the problems, all the series of problems, and all the problems that come our way. There's one word that describes that. That word is life. Because in this life, you will have trouble. You will have trials and tribulations and sorrows. Dear friends, dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through. As if something strange was happening to you. Rather, be glad that you are sharing Christ's sufferings so that you may be full of joy when his glory is revealed. You see, we can have peace today because we have a secure future. We can have peace today because God is in charge and no matter what happens, he, he will make it all turn out for good. You see, this world is not our home. We're just passing through, as the old song says. 
And this world, this is not heaven. This is a broken and sin-sick world. And we have a lot of things that can cause us distress. But God, through his son Jesus, gives us peace that passes all understanding. We can have peace in this world even as we recognize that we will experience God's peace forever and ever in the next. You see, I'm not uh, worried I can be at peace today and at peace about my future because when I die, I won't be leaving home. When I die, I'll be going home. And we will experience peace everlasting. I just want to say how much I love and appreciate you, Green Valley Church family, and I love and appreciate your fellowship and encouragement and support of each other, and that together you would encourage one another and experience God's peace in your hearts. In the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit. So may you have a great time together and encourage each other to pursue God's peace. God bless you.